As usual, with the brand new season, there have been some changes to the map, right? And while there aren't as many new locations as some of us would have hoped for, you know, there's still been some pretty large alterations to the island. Bunch of crush me where you at your motivation guy. That's right, I am back, and I'm excited as ever, man, because in today's video, we're gonna be learning the best landing spots for Fortnite Chapter 2, Season 7. Are you guys ready for this? Let's get this going. All right, guys, so with season seven comes the new addition of satellite stations. These new locations are spaced around the map and usually have a pretty similar layout. They consist of a few chest spawns, lots of floor loot and some IO guards, and really the special agent chests that give phenomenal rare and legendary loot. These satellite stations are scattered across the entire map and all serve as fairly good solo spots. You know, especially because of the built-in launch paths at each station, which allows for quick rotation and easy access to metal. Given the stations are constructed all out of metal, However, despite their similarities in design, certain satellite stations provide a more competitive advantage given their location and possible loop paths than others. So when choosing a satellite station to land at guys, keep in mind the ability to rotate as well and really surrounding loot. You know, oftentimes the loot at a satellite station is good enough to really get you started, but not sufficient enough to carry you through the end game. So make sure to note the location of the station on the map and really how far on average you're gonna need to travel after you take the built-in launch pad as the edge satellite stations often will have a farther travel time than the ones obviously located more centrally. So while I urge you guys to try out each satellite station for yourself just to find the best fit, you know, here are two good spots and subsequent loop paths I've definitely identified. Okay, so one great satellite station is the one to the immediate right of Weeping Woods, in between Weeping and Lazy Lakes. This spot is an essential location and on a mountain, meaning the built-in launch pad provides ample rotation anywhere in the immediate middle of the map which is where the first zone will almost always end up. And so this allows players enough time to properly, you know, farm for max metal, you know, secure good loot and rotate out of zone. If playing competitively, the satellite station also provides ample opportunities to really get storm surge tags on players down in Weeping, as well as over in Lazy if you cross the mountain range, making the satellite station a prime solo landing spot. So if you're struggling to hit those early game tags, guys, or, you know, you're getting W keyed and you just can't get away, head on over to ProGuys.com. You know, our master courses curated by the top pros like Mongrel and Clicks, they're going to teach you everything that you need to know about Fortnite so you can improve fast. All right, so if landing in the middle of the map isn't exactly your cup of tea, and you prefer to really play more passive and encounter less players in the early and mid game, then another great satellite station is the one on the far left of the map to the left of Believer Beach, which is formerly known as Sweaty Sands. This probably, even though it's like far away from the middle of the map, it has a great loot path that guarantees you brick, metal, wood, and a full on off-roading Lambo to really take you anywhere in the map. So after you land at the satellite station, which may be heavily contested at this point in the beginning of the season, it will most likely be relatively relatively uncontested later in the season as it progresses. So once you land at the satellite station and really loot up all of the chests, okay, and the agent chests right there, you're gonna wanna farm some metal. Really a lot of metal available elsewhere on this side of the map, you know, making metal a prime resource to obtain in the early game. You're definitely gonna wanna be careful to not spend too much time here at the satellite station to really avoid just getting caught in the storm on the next parts of the loot path. So timing will be key here, guys, and mastery of the timing will come from practice and practice and more practice. So just make sure not to drink any shield and just really save it all, unless another player is just contesting you. If uncontested, just wait until later because you're gonna come across a slurp truck that will give you full shield for free. And so after securing the loot and mats from the station, you're gonna wanna hit the launch pad to rotate out. If you have enough time and are uncontested, you could consider going straight to the castle east of the satellite station to get some brick and hit the few chests here. So if you don't have enough time to really stop by the castle or perhaps another player is at the castle, you're definitely gonna wanna skip going there and instead use the built-in launch pad at the station to fly directly to the beach filled with metal crates to the south of the station. So there are a handful of chests here, as well as an upgrade bench that is available to potentially upgrade any weapons that need to be upgraded. After spending a brief moment here, so head up to the beach house, overlooking the water right to the south of the crates. This house is essential to the loot path. Inside the house, you're gonna find some loot, so definitely make sure to grab it and just get the open chest. But even more important, there is a Rocket League themed Lambo that will always spawn there, along with an off-road mod right next to it in the garage. So throwing the off-road mod on the Rocket League Lambo, it's gonna turn into the ultimate rotation device and allow you to quickly rotate anywhere on the map, even though you're on an edge. So for the last step of the loop path, just head straight across east of the road where you're gonna find a slurp truck just waiting to be hit. After that, the next part of the loop path is really up to you. 
You know, here at Pro Guys, I would say, you know, head on over to the H House further south to really get some more loot and just really grab some gas at the gas station before heading to Zone or third partying some fights in Holly Edges. But I would encourage you guys to find out, you know, what really just works for you and your playstyle. So another series of great solo landing spots this season are the small spires around the map. And I'm sure you guys already know, the large spire in the middle of the map was removed by the aliens, but the small spires are still around the map in various locations. And in fact, they got even a bit of a buff. These spires have a chance for a double chest on top, with more loot available in houses around the base of the spire. But the real perk of the spire comes after looting up and taking advantage of the built-in launch pad at the top of the spire to rotate for free. So perhaps the best spire in the current map is the one directly north of Retail Row. This spire has a shack at its base, two full houses, you know, with lots of floor loot and some chests as well as a double chest spawn at the top of the spire. After looting, the built-in launch pad on the spire provides direct access to the lake and the houses below it for fishing, you know, retail road to the left, another satellite station to the right as well as dirty docks behind it. So if you land here, and I mean like right here, keep note of the players landing in those spots around you and just evaluate while looting the most optimal spot to really go to afterwards. Okay, so if one of those spots is uncontested, it might be worth just going there to loot. Or perhaps if you're an aggressive player, you may want to just fly, you know, to the one of the locations that has an active fight going on to really third party it. So another good spire is the one in Weeping Woods. This spire doesn't have the same collection of large houses below it, but its optimal positioning allows for a player to land on top, collect the double chest, and then quickly hit the built-in launch pad to fly away to any of the various cabins in the woods, Weeping Woods itself, or just even log jam, depending on the situation and where the enemies land. So if you decide to land here, again, just make sure as you glide, just really take note of where all the other players are landing around you, then decide where to rotate from there. Bunch of cross army, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the question of the day. All right, so today we want to know, what is your favorite new area in the Fortnite Season 7? You know, let us know in comments down below, and we're definitely going to check them out. All right, guys, back to the video. All right, guys, so, Bunch of Crunch Army. So we spent a lot of time covering some great solo drop spots in Season 7. So, but how about if you're playing duos or trios and you want to go somewhere with your team? Well, as of now, not many big POIs have been changed, although, you know, it is rumored to change as the season goes on and as the aliens invade. But for now, any of the old POIs that you and your teammates have practiced at last season will continue to work great for Season 7. But if you want to mix it up, right, and you want a fresh new team location to land at, then Corny Complex is your place. Colossal Crops is now and gone, and this season, it has been replaced by Corny Complex. So Corny Complex is your classic farm you'd expect from the outside, but the real magic comes inside the barn and silo, which have been decked out with the militarized tech and a huge secret bunker underneath the barn. Corny Complex is a great spot for any team. If you and your trio are landing here and you're uncontested, then you can just all spread out to different corners of the farm and get maxed out with loot by the time you're ready to leave. And so on the other hand, if you're contested, you and your team should try and secure the barn and silo first. After wiping out all the players at the barn, have one person position themselves on the barn roof as a lookout to really alert the rest of the team when the other teams that landed there decide to push the barn. As the lookout is positioned, the remaining teammates should spread out in the bunker and really just collect as much loot as possible before either A, pushing the rest of the teams in corny complex or B, rotating out to find more loot elsewhere. Both are two great options that just depend on your trio's playstyle and the situation happening in the game. Regardless guys, Corny Complex serves as a great new team landing spot in Season 7. Although in the beginning of the season, it is going to be heavily contested as everybody checks it out. So, you know, just make sure that you and your teammates are ready to put up a fight. And I know you can, but you got to believe in yourself. All right, guys. So those are the landing spots that we think that you need to do in order to really, like, succeed in the season. And so with the aliens attacking from the sky and the enemies attacking from all around you, you know, a good drop spot is going to be essential to succeed this season. So hopefully using one of these is definitely going to help you out. Hey, if you guys liked the video, make sure to sub to the channel and connect with me on my Instagram grandma your motivation guy you know i believe in you i'm your number one fan keep going i'll see you in the next one peace